Hello everyone. Heaven sir is here again and I am your science tutor. We have already started our first chapter which is nutrition in plant. In nutrition in plant we already discuss about the introduction what is nutrition and the types of nutrition also we did. In that we discuss about the autotrophic nutrition in detail. and we discuss about what are the things which are responsible or for the process of photosynthesis so we discuss photosynthesis in detail in last class we discuss about chlorophyll light then carbon dioxide and water also and we did activity also and uh, we gone through the homework so today in our today's class we are going to discuss about the heterotrophic nutrition today we going to discuss about heterotrophic nutrition so first we have to understand what is heterotrophic nutrition means okay see in that word itself we have the meaning hetero means to depends on other others on others and trophic means the nourishment or nutrition okay that means those organism that depends on other organism for their food are called as heterotrophs and that phenomenon is called as heterotrophic nutrition means that type of nutrition is called as heterotrophic nutrition understood everyone <coughs> okay good okay so even in plants we have like heterotrophs so let's discuss them some plant do not contain chlorophyll in them some grow in places where they do not get enough light for photosynthesis such plant do not okay such plant are not able to carry out the photosynthesis reaction and hence they depends on other plant or organism for their nutrition or food such nutrition is called as heterotrophic nutrition however some plants even though they are green means they contain chlorophyll in them but they also you know they carry also the photosynthesis reaction but they do not form required amount of food for them that's why being green being chlorophyll present in them still they depends on other plants okay so enough they do not prepare enough food for them okay why because even though they contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis that depends on other organism for certain kind of nutrition okay such plants are also called as heterotrophs the mode of nutrition in which organism depends on other organism for their food is called as heterotrophic nutrition so this is the definition for that okay this is definition for heterotrophic nutrition mm -hmm. i have written here h and it is nothing but the heterotrophic nutrition and this is the definition beta the mode of nutrition in which an organism depends on other organism for their food is called as heterotrophic nutrition okay organism that follow heterotrophic mode of nutrition are called as heterotrophs means those organism they adopt heterotrophic nutrition are called as heterotrophs heteron means on others and troph means nutrition means those organism that depends on other for their nutrition are called as heterotrophs understood everyone yes sir yes, yes sir now we are going to discuss about different types of like you know or uh, heterotrophic nutrition or plant over here so here we have main four types of heterotrophic plants number 1 we have parasitic plant number 2 we have saprophytic plant number 3 we have insectivorous plant and number 4 we have symbiotic plant again it is very important to understand that so first we will discuss about the parasitic plant see parasitic means what so parasitic plant means it is a plant in which one that 
partially or completely maybe partially or completely depends on other plant and those plant are called as host plant on which they grow okay such plants are called as parasitic plants okay we will discuss with example also don't worry usually parasitic plant develop special kind of roots okay very important parasitic plants they have special types of root in them which penetrates into the tissue of the host plant okay and prepared food is generally absorbed from the root of the stem of the host plant okay some example here we have the cascuta okay it is also called as dodder and we have mist leo okay someone is in waiting room beta let me in that okay wafa suhana is now in waiting room okay suppose here we have you know i am drawing here one of the parasitic plant called cascuta okay this is the cascuta plant okay and it have special kinds of roots here these are the special types of root okay and here we have the host plant so let me draw here the host plant okay this is the host plant beta okay this is the host plant branch or or maybe the stem okay and suppose here they have special kind of tissues called xylem and phloem from which food is being transported okay so these special kind of roots here that red color one i have drawn here which penetrates on the tissues of that host plant this is the host plant this is the host plant and here we have the parasitic plant okay so parasitic plants that special kind of root that penetrates on the tissue of the host plant and they absorb nutrition from them okay so here that plant which totally depends on host plant for their food okay so here yes, we sir. have one important fact here fact file a parasitic plant rafflesia okay bears the world's largest flower and flower have five petals okay see just world largest flower is called as rafflesia and it is a parasitic plant flower okay just do remember that this is a fact the flower have five petals and may have a diameter up to 106 cm and the weight of that flower up to 10 kg understood everyone that fact yes sir that's so much kg sir yes it's about 10 kg you really want to work out to find these find the up uh, these parasitic plants and just lift the flower that they do use a yes, lot of yes. kg sir okay sir and it smells like rotten meat sir uh yes yes okay so here is you can see here that you know the hair like structure yellowish color which is on the green plant is called as cascuta this is the cascuta in hindi it is called as beta amar bel it is called as amar bel amar bel okay in hindi it is called as amar bel and in english it is called as cascuta or dodder okay it has a short root and a long thread like stem it twins around the host stem okay suppose here we have the host host stem so that plant used to you know twing like this okay like this okay and special kinds of root they absorb that penetrate on the host plant and absorb nutrition from them okay and sends branches around the neighboring plant also okay neighboring stem and it generally used to like spread all over the plant and used to absorb nutrition from them okay next we have this is the first example now second example here we have with like diagram also see this plant is green already it performs the photosynthesis but for certain kind of nutrient it depends on host plant okay so it is partially depends on other plant partially okay so the here we have the name it 
Miss Del Toro has a see. It totally not depend on other plant. Okay, so it is literally green leaves. Okay, it has a green leaves and it can make its own food. However, the plant still depends on host plant for certain kind of mineral and water. Okay, because it does not grow on the soil, it grows on the other plant. That's why it depends on the host plant for certain kind of minerals and water. That's why it is also parasitic. So, in parasitic relationship, only the parasitic plant get benefit. Okay, that means they used to harm the host plant. They because they absorb nutrition from the host plant. That means. only parasitic plant is get benefited and host plant is getting harm due to that the parasitic plant harm the host plant okay to some extent by slowing down the growth sometime causing heavy damage however the parasitic plant rarely kills the host plant also by absorbing most of the nutrition it may kills the host plant also okay this is all about the parasitic nutrition okay if you have any kind of doubt you may ask the question now beta now we are going to discuss about the next type of the plant and which is the saprophytic plant so just do remember saprophytic plant means those plant they depends on the dead organic matter dead organic matter of plant or animal okay the dead organic matter may be from the plant or animal so they depend on the dead organic matter only okay so the saprophytic plant is one that obtain its nutrition from the dead and decaying plant and animals matter okay this is nothing but the organic matter of the plant and animal see sapros means the rotting and phyton means the plant okay that means those plant they depends on the rotten part okay the decaying decomposing part of the plant and animal are called as saprophytic plants it is usually white is but sometime okay some plants have can have the different color okay like brightly colored flower also in them okay as in case of that particular plant these plant often have no leaves at all because they do not perform photosynthesis so they don't have chlorophyll and for chlorophyll they don't have the leaf also they often grow in a deep shade in tropical forest example are some indian pipe and the coral roots okay even the mushroom that fungus that we used to eat sometime they are also the saprophytic plants is it because that mushroom is very delicious and uh, we used to eat that right yes so here we have the indian pipe is found commonly in asia and north america okay this is the found the indian pipe it is found in asia and north america and here we have the coral root it is found in the forest around the world it found all over the world in forest okay the root of the saprophytic plants contain organism called fungi okay see the roots of the saprophytic plants they contain organism called fungi the fungi convert dead and decaying matter into the nutrient that can be again reabsorbed by the other plants okay that can be used as a food like sugar by this plant fungi are also called as saprotrophs see sapro means those they depend on the dead organic matter of plant and animal and trophs means again that uh, nutrients so those organism or plant they depends on dead organic matter of plant and animal for their food are called as saprotrophs so again here we have one important point that we have to discuss fungi were earlier considered to be saprophytic plant however they are no longer classified as plant okay so they have classified into different category called fungus 
they are been removed out from the plant now they belongs to an entirely different category of the organism which is classified under the kingdom called fungi so you know in earlier days that fungi used to come under the plant but now they have different kingdom called fungi okay like mushroom and the toadstools are commonly example of the fungi and that mushroom is being like they have different different kind of species some species we used to eat okay they are not toxic and the most uh, one important mushroom it is being used for the medicinal purpose also okay so here we have to perform one activity okay here to grow the fungi okay material we required a piece of the bread water and a box what is the method in order to grow the fungi moist on the bread with water and keep it outside for few days like one to two days okay in the closed box of a few days after you will observe okay some gray patches on the bread that patches are nothing but the fungi okay because, sir i did this activity sir okay suppose you have the bread piece here this is the piece of the bread okay and just keep that piece of the bread on the moist place moist place you know for few days for two days keep that bread on the moist place moist place so you will observe on bread like greenish brown color patches there okay if you will observe them on microscope you will found some kind of structure like this okay that structure is nothing but the fungi that thread like structure you will find there is nothing but the fungi okay this is all about the activity so you can grow those fungi on the bread as we have already discussed in this activity like this okay now we are going to discuss about insectivorous plant insectivorous plant means insect eaters we can say okay the plant they used to eat the insect but how we have to understand that see what happen generally most of the plant they used to grow in such a soil or land where nitrogen is present very very less amount so in order to fulfill the requirement of nitrogen this plant get modified like this as you can see in the diagram okay this is the modified form of the plant so in this modified plant they used to trap some insect in order to fulfill the need of nitrogen okay so here we have some example it is the venus flytrap we will discuss each one by one so let discuss from the notes now see insectivorous plants are one that derive some or most of the nutrient by trapping and consuming the animals mainly insects mainly insects that's why we have named I here insectivorous plants these plants mostly grow in the place where the soil is deficient in certain nutrients like nitrogen and those the like nutrient they are getting from the insect by modified themselves hence these plants need to obtain required nutrition from other sources example like venus flytrap we have the pitcher plant here this is the venus uh, this is the pin, uh, venus flytrap and this is the pitcher plant we have the drosera also okay it is also called as sundew and the blood pot okay the blood pot is also one of the insectivorous plants so these are the four example we will discuss one by one here so first one we are going to discuss about the venus flytrap this one is venus flytrap okay so venus flytrap has the leaves modified into the trap insects okay these are the modification of the leaves so that they can trap the insect easily the inner surface of the leaves have short 
and stiff hair like structure as you can see here these are the stiff hair like structure when the insect touches the hair the leaves snap shut they used to shut suddenly in less than a second okay i will show you video also after the discussion and the insect in them trapped and digested by the plant in order to fulfill the nitrogen requirement okay next the second one we'll discuss about the pitcher plant the leaf of the pitcher plant is modified to form a tubular pitcher like structure so this is the pitcher like structure okay like tube over here the inside of the pitcher is lined with the downward pointing hair that do not allow trapped insect to climb up and scap okay if once the insect get fall over here fall down it will not go out okay it will not scap from that feature yes the sir. fluid at the bottom of the feature contain digestive juice and digest the trapped insect there so sir. this is the feature plant after discussion you can ask your question beta sir this is my question so i just want to say that so in the pitcher plant when the insect or the mice sits on the sits on the leaf so the leaf has a hair which it... yeah this is the modified form of the leaf only i will show you video also don't worry so then that the oil makes the insect slip if it even doesn't want to yes, go in yes 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 okay so third one we have the drosera or it is also called as sundi okay plant have long thin structure called tentacles so as you can see in diagram here they have the dew like structure and this hair like structure called tentacles which have drops of the sticky substance called see this is the drop like structure as you can see here this is the sticky one okay and which is made up of the mucilage at their end when once an insect touches the tentacles it gets stuck in the mucilage and unable to escape from there and then it is digested by the plant it is digested by the plant okay now fourth fourth example here we have okay see the cylinder leaves of the bladder wort bear a large number of very small pear shaped bladder here see these are the nothing but the bladder like structure bladder like the container okay the bladder like structure which acts like the trap doors trap door and suck in the small insect in less than a second okay so when insect passes through here they okay and uh, set on them they used to trap that insect and they used to digest very fast okay everyone so this is all about the insectivorous plant i will show you the video also don't worry now last but not the least we have the symbiotic plant okay so symbiotic plant means nothing but two different types of plant they are providing benefit to each other yes okay? sir yes so providing benefit to each other that relationship is called as symbiotic that's why those plants are called as symbiotic plants certain plants live on association with other organism okay and share food and other nutrients also okay both type of the plant mutually gain benefit from each other such plants are called as symbiotic plants and the relationship is called as symbiosis okay example here we have this is the example lichen and lichen are the symbiotic and associated between the fungus okay and microscopic chlorophyll containing in organism okay and that's why they appears in the green like algae 
and this other singular called alga see algae is the plural form and singular form of algae is called as alga the algae provide nutrition to the fungus and fungus helps the algae to grow in a harsh condition okay that means that lichen and fungus they are providing benefit to each other and they are going together this relationship is called as beta symbiotic relationship okay and the place where they would otherwise will not survive okay so they can survive on the fungus only and not on that particular place okay that means fungus as well as lichen they used to provide benefit to each other are called as symbiotic relationship okay everyone okay sir so, yeah, so this is so, so this is all about the symbiotic part so here we have already discussed about all the four types of heterotrophic plants so i want if you have like any kind of doubt you can ask the doubts now okay so sir. students uh, here we are going to understand the insectivorous plant how they like to get their nutrient from different insects so just go through the video i have increased little time okay uh, like speed in order to complete that video quickly Okay, so this is the feature plant. Okay, let here we have one insect, the fly, which is going close to it. It is approaching toward the feature plant. Here, this feature plant, you know, used to secrete some like kind of juice. So due to the in the good smell insect used to attract towards that and once they fall there they get digested by the digestive juice as you can see in venus or that which are plant and here as you can see that the hair like you know structure uh which is nothing but the ten like tentacles due to them that the insect can't escape from there probably heard of the here we have that uh, venus flytrap is it the venus flytrap here we have the feature plant sundews, and here sundews, we have the sundew we also called as drosera there are hundreds of species okay, and these are, are the different kinds of plants they use to eat the insects They're often found in bogs with nutrient poor soil where only some plants can thrive. But they need more nitrogen and phosphorus than they can find in this meager soil. So our carnivorous friends evolved a sourceful way to bring a little life into their diet. Each leaf is studded with red hair-like tentacles that secrete dew drops from their round glands. Those glistening droplets are made of water and complex sugars. They lure in insects like this unfortunate weevil with their sweet aroma and taste. 
But before long, the weevil gets hopelessly trapped in this super sticky substance. Sessile glands at the base of the tentacles release digestive enzymes into the prey. Some sundews, like this forked variety, dissolve their meals on the spot. But the cape sundew goes even further. Over several hours, it tightly grips its meal with its leaves. By completely enveloping its prey, the sundew can extract even more nutrients. Cape sundews bend the very idea of how we think plants should behave. They not only move their tentacles, but they sense prey with them too. Incredibly, they seem to be able to tell what's alive, like this fly, and what's not, like this leaf. Just a tiny stimulus can set the sundew in motion. Moving in response to touch like this is called thigmotropism. While plants don't have brains or neurons like we do, they do use electrical signals, just like our nervous systems. Scientists call these signals action potentials. They guide the tentacle's graceful and deadly grasp. It's possible that sundews can also detect whether they've trapped something that's nutritious or not. That one got lucky. For the unlucky ones, all that's left is an empty exoskeleton. When a sundew's had its fill, it will slowly unfurl again, patiently waiting for its next meal. Ugh, what is that smell? It's the giant corpse flower, which looks like raw meat and smells like a dead rat. Flies and beetles love it. And what's up with tumbleweeds? They start out green and full of life with teeny pink flowers, but soon turn into prickly, rolling brown